All right, boys. Uh, your boy, biscuits, orange and blue, bleeding. Back with another video, another nonsensical intro, and um, this video is is the second part to the uh, offensive edition that I put out about three weeks ago. Uh, I was dealing with finals, so I couldn't put as much into this as I wanted to. But uh, using a uh, iPhone mic, so you might not. The quality might not be the greatest, but here, we'll just get straight into the video. So, in talking about the Auburn defense uh, for 2018, it's really, um, it's one of those few instances where statistics all lie in the same area, and really what you watch is virtually what you're seeing. A lot of times, statistics tell the story, or, um, you know, you, you kind of use them as a counter to what you're seeing. But with this with this particular year, it's, it was exactly what it was, the quote future. And uh, we're going to get right into it. So here, I'm going to start the schedule to, to just kick it off. So you have to watch the game, right? Um, opener games usually are pretty good defensively for, you know, any team really because you're not in the offensive flow yet. But I've, particularly Auburn, usually their defense uh, clamps up quite a bit. Usually it's just the offense that poops a bit. Um, and this almost was the exact same tale. Uh, I believe they came out 21. Uh, I believe Washington scored 10 points in the first half. And uh, maybe even shut out the first quarter. I know these are things you've got to quantify. So we'll do just that. And uh, when I was watching this, I really felt like um, that the defense was doing a pretty good job. There wasn't much edge rushing, which would become a microcosm of the rest of the season. But the run was stuffed, which would also be a figment of the rest of the season defensively. And um, the, oh, the, the, the back end was just getting picked on. Uh, in this instance, it was more so Noah Igbignagin. I should know how to pronounce that at some point. But Noah was mainly the one getting uh, picked on in this instance. And you could really feel that they they saw that matchup and they were going to spoil the whole game, which they did for the most part. I would say the second quarter, as you can kind of see, was Washington's peak. <clears throat> they really came in and did their thing. Although later on, uh, you would see that in the the fourth quarter, if you watch that game, the fourth quarter is pretty much filled with like them getting the red zone, getting the red zone, and almost but not quite putting it in there. There were a couple times where it's like literally by a finger, uh, shout out to Sean Davis, I believe, literally by a finger that they didn't score. So that that's a game that could have went another way but uh thankfully didn't and yeah it was it was it was a, a middling defensive performance but it was a lot to hope for if things were to improve and we go from that to the auburn and who did we play here it was a scrub team wasn't it a real scrubby team we actually didn't do very well against oh we did good okay yeah alabama state yeah no no I was thinking about uh, Southern Miss. But, yeah, Alabama State, I don't even know why I'm looking this game up, honestly. Well, actually, I do know why because it was really weird. Like, the first quarter was was kind of sketchy. They were, like, actually, like, throwing it at will. But um, as with, with this team, I guess, they just give up a lot of yards but clinch up when it matters. Um, at least in this game they did. And, yeah, it was weird. The time of possession was almost the same. But, you know, with a, with a team with a blowout like that, it's more indicative that you were just scoring a lot of points pretty much. So the LSU game, that's that's where I think the story of the season really begins um, unfolding because there's a lot of things not to like about this, this game, honestly. So we get into it, and you look at uh, the score. You have LSU, who had, you know, 22 um, kind of balanced throughout the like the second and third quarter was where I feel like the Auburn defense like really stood up 
the uh, first quarter was an abject bom abomination rushing wise. I think they had like God, they had like 300 yards rushing, but I believe like a hundred at least of those came in the. Uh, they only had 121 rushing. All right, the reason why I'm so surprised about that is because they were rushing like literally at will in the opening quarter. So I guess Auburn's defense really just stood up after that. And uh, I believe one possession, the first possession after Stedham's pick, they drove it right down the field. Uh, Edwin had a couple of, I think, check downs. And uh, they ran the ball pretty well in that first quarter. Um, second quarter, they stood up. Auburn's defense stood up. And third quarter, third in the early fourth, it looked like, you know, it's pretty much going to be a route. Like, it was like 21 to 10 or something like that, I believe. And Burrow was having a lot of, like, yards to catch type of throws, but it's like nothing but short, like, type passes. And I think it really just got blown open um, once they started hitting, like, okay, back shoulder to Justin Jefferson, uh, back shoulder to Justin Jefferson, uh, crossing route. And then they chunked it deep. It was it should have been a pick. Like I don't know how many picks Burrow had. He had no picks. Well, he should have had like at least three or four. Um. And yeah, there was a. I think it was a. It was. It was like four Auburn defenders and like one receiver. I. It may have been Jefferson. It may have been somebody else. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can recognize, recognize the name. I think it was a Derek Dillon dude. Matter of fact, because it was like a 70 yard throw <laughs> that was literally a miracle. Uh, and it was, it's quite literally the worst defensive, like, defensive back IQ I've ever seen in my entire life. And it, I, that kind of was actually indicative of, of the, uh, the season. But I think, I still think Auburn, if they had the grade out, it would have been like a, a C. I'd say a B minus for this because LSU offense was coming on pretty well. And, um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't like they were awful. They just weren't, like, great. And plus with the assistance of ref ball, you know, that's what, um, that's kind of how that game went. They played against the refs and LSU, and they did pretty well. All right, so I'm going to start skipping some of these games because uh, it's really it's the same tale. Arkansas didn't do very well defensively, as I remember. Uh, Auburn had a couple of. Could have been picked uh, with turnover touchdowns. And when I was called back on some ridiculous nonsense. And, uh, yeah, Auburn's defense was pretty stout in that one. Uh, it had to actually save the offense, actually. Uh, Southern Miss game. I think Southern Miss has some, like, crazy, like, drives for touchdowns in this game. Like, they had, like, two good drives this whole game. Yeah, like, this 30 or 44 for 215 yards. The, the Auburn offense just, you know, it's it's kind of weird. It, it just isn't, not Auburn offense, Auburn defense just kind of was like, against the pass, you know, you could have like a legitimate like 50-50 chance no matter who you were to get a pretty good gain passing the ball, which I'm not sure why people didn't throw the ball more. If you look at, um, where is it at? Is this the pass, team pass ring? Yeah. We were 47th in team passing rating. Now, this doesn't, you know, I don't know how the formula works out, but I assume it works in the same way that QBR works, except, you know, the defense giving it up. So, we were lower than Texas Christian, South Florida, and Middle Tennessee in that regard. And we weren't playing the best quarterbacks, ball. I mean, like, you look back at the schedule, Jake Browning meh at best really this season uh Danny not Danny Ellen <laughs> Danny Ellen 2.0 uh Joe Burrow yo anybody who says Joe Burrow's good and can eat my draws Mississippi State's uh Fitzgerald went off um efficiency wise definitely yo that dude is a, a damn bohemian like he is not even a real quarterback I feel like um Tennessee Guantanamo I don't know what G G Gore Ranimo? I don't know how to pronounce his name. I always say Guantanamo. Uh, went off. Shouldn't. I, I've, I've never seen such a middling offense just wreck an Auburn defense since like 20, the, the dark ages, like 2014. That's, that was pathetic. Uh, what's his name? My boy, 
the Polynesian prince, uh, Tamu. Yeah, Tamu did really well yards wise, but as with most Ole Miss games, they just couldn't figure out a way to put the ball in the end zone. And uh, they could really throw the ball whenever they wanted to against this defense. I saw like three quarters of it, and they were like, they weren't very good defending the pass, but they just thought like, anytime they would get like one good running play between Phillips or uh, Tamu, they would just keep on running the ball. And it was it didn't make sense to me. They were like literally just abandoning the pass for like three straight running plays. Whoever the offensive coordinator is should probably be fired, to be honest with you. Um yeah, A and M I don't know how Mon did this. I don't remember exactly how Mon did. I know he had a fairly solid running game and I know that the running back, uh Travion, I think, did really good, yeah. 16 and 32, that's that's pretty good passing performance because Ma looked like a really good like improvement, like huge improvement over where he was last year. So I think we did pretty good. I think we did I'm pretty sure we did great uh what am I trying to say here? Pass rush wise in this game. I don't know if the sacks may reflect that because usually Auburn got very few sacks in any kind of game. Let's see. Um Oh yeah, I forgot ESPN doesn't like actually have like stats as like, a statistic. I mean sacks as a statistic. Uh, ESPN, please get get on your stuff, man. Alright, let's see. We're gonna find this. Fumbles. We recovered two fumbles. That's nice. And forced two more. Wow. Oh wait, that's That's fumbles that we had. Okay. Well never mind. No. Wait, they have five fumbles. Okay, so that's that's fumbles that we forced. But uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to read that statistic. So we have five sacks. Yeah, it was a pretty good uh, sack day. And how many tackles we lost? Twelve. So yeah, this is probably our best like front seven uh, game, honestly, the entire year, from what I can gather. And uh, yeah, I mean they just clamped like you got to give the credence. Uh, Taurus Fisher for like literally just taking his foot off the pedal in the in the back half and just seems to run the ball with Williams who was dominating this Corbin guy who's also popping for five yards per carry. Like literally, if they just wanted to run the clock out, they could have. We we didn't have time to come back. <laughs> Excuse me, but they didn't. So shout out to them. Uh, another middling QBR performance. Uh, Kellen Mond. Wasn't put in a good position to succeed, I feel like. And the Georgia game, I can do this without even looking at statistics. So they did pretty well, I feel like, in the first half of the game as far as limiting from and making him shook. It looked like they were going to have to put Peters in at, at points like to throw the ball because Auburn just wasn't taking anything that Fromm was giving them throwing-wise. And uh, it was like that until the very end of the first half where I think this is I'm not I'm not sure if I'm confusing this with them or the Florida game. I think it's the Florida game where Nauta went off, but in this game too, they had like one uh scoring drive before the end of half. No, it wasn't it wasn't um I don't think it was Nauta. It was like a, a fourth down and they did some crazy stuff to Godwin, I believe. Yeah, Terry Godwin Literally the last drive because we just like took the foot off the pedal and gave him the ball back or something like that. And yeah, they had a a a fourth down, fourth and one, I believe, where we just had I think was it Noah on Godwin, and it was like a just a pretty much a simple head fake and uh, Noah, whoever's defending Godwin, got lost and yeah, it was the easiest touchdown I think I've seen. And what's amazing to me is that as bad like as bad as they were doing like rushing defense wise, they were yo, know, they were getting carved up, bro. And as great as Fromm was in the second half of this game, uh, they didn't score again until like the fourth quarter. So if you just look at this in this way, if Auburn does choose to actually burn the clock out, um, in such an advantage to try to actually score points, and they don't allow Georgia to how should I say, uh, throw a 38-yard touchdown <laughs> on fourth and one. They would have been going into the entire third quarter only down three points. And that, Auburn had some pretty, I'd say, a, a chances 
to to get to a field goal range. Um, Shivers had a good running play. Yeah, uh, Stidham. Most of Stidham's good plays came in the first half. So I can't even say like like it would have been a situation where he could have you know made a positive impact going forward in the rest of that game. But, yeah, I mean, as bad as they were, this is, like, pretty much their best display of, like, just being a dominant running defense, rush defense, red zone defense, um, because they just pretty much held it back as long as they could, and the offense just decided not to show up in the first, in the second half. Uh, they scored not a single point in the entire second half. And, uh, yeah, the only touch that they did score was on a gimmick play because we couldn't move the ball in the red zone either. And the Liberty game, that's not, I'm not even going to waste my breath on that. Alabama game was, what's the tell of the tape of that? As I remember it going, the first half was, I'm going for 15, 16 minutes now. Uh, the first half was pretty good defensively, like as good as you could probably have been. Uh, they weren't going to be good throwing, you know, pass defense. At all, but they they did admirably, not being completely just devastated. Uh, I don't want to tie in the offense here. The offense did a better job of controlling the clock. Uh, they ran the ball a, like it's not about how you run against Alabama. It's about you, it's not about how much you run. It's about how you run, and they ran pretty effectively. I felt like, and uh, yeah, the first half like a really it felt like a situation where like, the defense put Alabama. Auburn and a good enough chance to win. Uh, I think Tua had thrown a pick either. Was it in this half or was it? It may have been in the next in the third quarter. But, uh, yeah, they did a good job of doing what they had to do. Uh, held up. I won't say they held up in the red zone because you can see right here they, they didn't hold up in the red zone. But uh, they, they did well enough to keep them from getting into a position to get in the red zone, I suppose. <laughs> And yeah, they gave they gave us a lot of chances to to score points that we kind of wasted. I actually, gave the ball back to Auburn before the end of the uh, second, the first half, and we didn't uh, score. So yeah, they they their talents were wasted. And you could tell very quickly by the score that Alabama just decided to just run the ball, um, move the ball, so I should speak, and push the tempo up. We couldn't keep up with it. Did a good job of like. Trying to stop the run. There's a lot of third downs, which it came more of a theme later in the season where we just give up like ridiculous third downs. Uh, very reminiscent of the the Auburn defense of, of yesteryear, where you would see like Tua, for example, he'd be drop back, that five step drop back, get hit up, uh, get grabbed up, and just break a tackle and like, you know, third and eight, get, a, get nine yards. And that is be a theme, I guess, later on in the game, um, later on in the season, I should say, where we would just give up crazy third downs. More, more uh, evident in the Tennessee game, where that happened pretty much every other play. It was quite literally one of the worst third down performances of any defense, maybe ever, really. And yeah, I mean, I could I could go on about that, but what I was meaning to say earlier is like why or how the statistics came to a general mean. If you look at here, this is a total. Uh, defense yards per game, right? Total defense based mainly yards per game. You see, um, so you look at this, you know, not not like you you look at this probably five years ago, and the first page would have like at least one person, if not like five, six, seven, twelve teams giving up four hundred yards. So it's a different like uh, offense aren't as creative as they were. Five years ago, uh, back when Auburn's defense was an abject failure, but you can also chalk up the defense as being better, I guess, being more, you know, inclined to catch up on them things. And yeah, I mean, forty-five yards per forty-fifth in yards per game. That's not that's not middling either because it's above above average. But you know, when you think about how they were a year before, I would imagine they were probably like what, like thirtieth, probably twenty-fifth, something like that. Uh, definitely a, a drop off. You can attune a lot of that to a the DBs being picked on as much as they were. I can't remember a game other than like maybe UCF where people just dropped back and picked on the Auburn uh, DBs. Maybe against Kelly Bryant a little bit, but like that back shoulder was like the only thing he had against them. 
uh, not as well as, you know, Deshaun Watson the year before, but, like, pretty much, as far as I can think of, they were really stout pass-wise last year. And I guess once you slide out, you know, Stephen Roberts and uh, Carlton Davis for Noah Egbenagi and um, who do you even have as safety, like Daniel Thomas? Yeah, it was just, it wasn't the same level of intensity on that end. And losing Jeff Holland hurt a lot, too. I would say the defensive line was, like, deeper in terms of, like, quality, you know, i.e. experience depth. But losing Holland, there's no, like, true edge rusher. And uh, when you look at, like, you know, some of the uh, less flattering statistics, like, you know, let's, let's, let's think about it like this. So you got the, I believe this is pass rating, right? Right. You can, you can uh, attribute a lot of this to, like, not being able to get sacks or not finish sacks and not have to depend on coverage for, like, to hold up, like, five, six, seven seconds, which isn't realistic. And you look at the running defense. Uh, opponent yards per rush attempt. When you think about an edge rush, you think more in the, the um, sense of getting sacks. But um, for Auburn, it hurt both ways because we couldn't contain. Because our we had, like, Nick Cole and, like, I think Big Cat ran a lot of D end. And uh, Davidson, Davidson isn't, like, Davidson is, like, complete, like, a run-stopping DN, but, like, an interior run-stopping DN. Like, he's, like, a – I don't know if he's mobile enough to be a, a good edge rusher. Maybe he can play, like, big boy edge rusher just to, you know, stifle an inside run. But outside, we had nobody that could move um, and contain. So we gave up, like, four yards per carry. But if you look at, like, the, the Georgia game, uh, I'm really trying to, like – take a dump on the offense rush of defense when it wasn't that bad, but it wasn't like it was it just didn't feel like it, it could have been better, you know, they just had a true edge rusher that could play contain. And the linebackers we have here, they aren't like and Sean Davis, great, great, great person, great linebacker, great talent. But I know he's banged up a lot and he's not like a a come in and like stifle like a like a you know a hard hitter like that, you know to to clamp up the edges, you know. That's why we have the buck positions to do that, you know. That's you want somebody a little bit bigger than Deshaun Davis out there. The outside linebacker, I don't know who we had outside linebacker to be honest with you. Um Daryl Williams was what? Was he outside linebacker? I like to think Deshaun Davis was a middle linebacker. I'm pretty sure that's how I remember it. Yeah, based on this this frame, I'm saying Daryl and I think um What's my boy? Um, uh, Montavious were like the starting like uh, other linebackers, and uh, yeah, neither of them are like run stoppers really. So you know you have a lot. You didn't have anybody really clamp up the run. It, it'd be inopportune times where we give up that. And uh, just to close off with, you know, they were forty third in opponent yards per rush attempt, and forty seventh in um, average rating. So pretty much we were just going out there and doing. Very middling in the entire game, entire season, really. But the the stat that just, I guess, reinforces how Ben no brink they were with the, was the red zone, where I believe they were top. Going into the Alabama game, they were, like, top one in terms of giving up, like, touchdowns in the red zone. Now, obviously, I think after Alabama came, they had to, they had to drop off quite a bit. But beforehand, they were fantastic, and – uh yeah, I think the defense had a lot of time, a lot of chances to to win what could have been close games for the team, but the offense just couldn't take advantages. And um, I don't know how we're doing recruiting-wise, but if they can just get – I think – okay, so I know – I think Williams is a um, senior. I know Deshaun Davis, if he's out of here. And who's the other guy? Atkinson. Atkinson, I think, is a senior too. I feel like he is. So – if they can get one, like, I'm talking, like, stud outside linebacker, and then one preferably stud, at least a solid linebacker, middle linebacker, that's, like, a good, you know, head on the shoulders as far as di- diagnosing runs, that'd be nice. Um, I said it a thousand times, they need a great edge rusher because, obviously, Auburn, when you see a, a bad Auburn defense, like, it's bad, usually it starts with the uh, edge rushers. 2013, 
it's better than 2014. I feel like we had Carl Lawson, Andy Ford, the the goat himself. Uh, 2015, we didn't really have. I could think, you know, the as good as it could have been in terms of that. Uh, 2016, we Carl Lawson's last year. He progressed a lot. It felt looked a lot more natural. Uh, and we had Holland on the other end. 2017, of course, we had Holland on the other end who took a lot of, you know, brunt that allowed uh, Davidson to look a lot better in one-on-one matchups. And, uh, yeah, we just need, desperately need a superstar commitment on that end. And that's all for me. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the rambling, and uh, have a good day.